Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about semantics. So let's get into it. So basically what we're going to cover is the importance of being deliberate in your code, how one quick decision can create legacy, and how to think about semantics. So there's a little bit of backstory here. Um, the other day one of my coworkers asked me over to basically have a look at the problem. And he explained that one of our new vendors who wanted to integrate to our system needed to have a custom API where they basically have the ability to create users within our system and then they could sell products or like forward users to our system through their mobile application. Now our already existing system well, it's a web-based solution or was a web-based solution. So basically it's all about adding another APIs that can that the this external vendor can integrate to. So the problem was that now that the deal is done it's down to specifications and whenever we talk about specifications and requirements there is always something there's never ever something that's easy and one of the things that they expressed was that they needed to be able to create users in our system basically using the user's name within their system and then query based on that username. So my the my coworker just wanted to walk it through with me. So let's just walk through. I've created a very basic example of how this application was working and I'll exp and then we're just gonna walk through how I how I spoke to him about this. So here is our very tiny little API. Just imagine that this is a much larger system, but it's basically the same thing. So here we have the API endpoints. These are the basically the API endpoints that we now cre have created or that my coworker has created in order to uh, accommodate this need where you can see here that we can create a user, we can get a user, and we can update a user and then we can here down here are the user endpoints the ones that are actually for the web facing interfaces and here you can you do the same thing pretty much it's the same sort of functionality but it's just two different ways or two different clients that are going to connect to these things right and then we have a user model which looks like this it's a very simplified version of a user model but there you are and then we have a few services here, like a user service. Then we have an, a, like the actual user service itself. And I'm just kind of stubbing off and faking all of this stuff. But imagine that this is your old, oldest, most boring type of DAO level service, which is just basically going to do the stuff that is going to happen in the database. Create, get, and so forth. And I can I even see here that or that you can see here that I've just added to do's for this because I didn't feel like I needed to wire all of this up. And then we have an interface that is just going to represent the incoming thing that you can update, which is the name. So basically what we were talking about was his suggestion was this, because now we have this requirement, right? So when the external party is creating a user, we basically just check if they're sending a name, then we create a user with that name, and we save that user and then just return the course of the user that has just been created. Easy PC. And this, because this is the exact same thing we're doing in the already existing application, in the exact same manner as you can see. Now, the problem is this. Would you wager a guess why this is a problem? Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna beat around the bush about this. I'm not gonna annoy you more than necessary. But basically, this update function here has a bit of a problem. The reason why there is a bit of a problem is because not necessarily because of this alone, but because this exists as well. So what was the thing that our our render was saying? So what they're gonna do is that they are going to create a user on their side and then they're going to create uh, create a user in our system or the, by in essence creating a user with a given username which means that they are going to use our their, the user's name as the identifying part in our system in other words when they query us when they're trying to grab this user id here that's not going to be the idea that we ID we are sending them. Don't ask me why. 
but this is way, the way it was going to work. So they're going to send an ID, and this ID here is not the ID that we have, but it is the username. So my coworker had this idea that, okay, if that is the case, then maybe we should create some type of abstraction or some way of saying that, oh, you know, this username cannot be touched. Because the problem is here, as you can see, like, I mean, we if they are updating the username, that should be fine because they have on their side a corresponding entity that actually maps to our system so that they know that, oh, if I update this username here in our application, then they need to synchronize that on their side so that they actually update it there as well. So that makes sense, right? But this is a problem because this is the user the user that is using using our web application and not this external vendor. And the user has the ability to change their username as well. And don't ask me why this is the way it was. This is just the way it was, I'm sorry to say. And so my coworker was saying like, yeah, this is a problem because if the user goes, if they create a user, a user in our system, and then that user goes to our system and then goes through our web interface and updates their own username, like they change the username, then the the chain is broken, there the, because the, we haven't uh, there, there's a miss there we have gotten out of sync with the external system, so he was there are only a few ways we could do this like one way would have been that okay yeah if they try to update here and they change their username in our web application then maybe we should you know send a request back to the vendor system and just update that and keep them in sync that wasn't really feasible because then this is a two-way integration instead of a one-way integration which is the case here so my and there was not time for there was no time for this so my coworker had this suggestion so he was saying okay but maybe we can create like a a configuration or something to run an instance of this code so that we can put an if statement here something like i don't know we can say something like if Let's see here, process dot n dot m is equal to test, something like that. Then we should simply return a uh, error, or should, we should throw something. Let's just throw an error. Throw new error, foobar, something like that. So the basic idea being that if you are if we're running a specific instance of this application, then we simply don't allow the user to up their, update their username. That was his idea. So he had started creating a configuration system where any updates to the username wouldn't happen if we were if this user had been uh, if the user is is in this environment, right? And then I told him, well, that's not really going to work because what like you, all that's going to happen is that you now need to have a dedicated instance of this application with a separate database where all of these vendor API integrations come and all these users are in that specific one, which means that we have now sharded our data into different databases. We, we actually lose a holistic, we, we can't query all our, of our users because they exist in two places at the same time. One where the vendors have their users or like our representation of those users and one where we have everybody else that is using the normal, like the normal web interface so i said this is this is this is going to be really really bad and then he says okay uh, may, but maybe we can do this maybe we could do something like this let's uh, let's uh, let's do this let's go to the user and one thing we could do is we could create a subtype maybe, or just a type, let's say something like, I don't know, uh, was made by, or is API user. We could do that, <coughs> we could do that. And then we simply need to extend this. Is API user boolean? We can actually make that an optional just because is API user. Cool. So now what we can do is that we can go to our, well let's just remove that, we could go down here and we could say that okay so we're gonna update the user and then we can say okay but if, yeah, no I actually need to get the user first. Uh, we can actually do this user to update is API user Rather, if 
they're not an API user, we're just going to do that. So in other words, like we allow the user to make an update. Like they will, like maybe they will. In this case, this model is much simpler, so they could update other things as well on the actual model because in the real model we had like emails and phone numbers and all kind of other stuff. But I'm just trying to keep this very simple now to illustrate my point. So. Basically, we're just checking that, okay, if they try to update something and they are an API user, because we can't allow them to change that name, uh, because if they change their username, we're fucked, because then the, then no, they're never going to be able to get through the through this vendor's integration. So then, and then he said, look, maybe we could do this instead. And I go, well, yeah, but isn't this also going to be really, really weird where, okay, so now we have actually broken functionality. You see the problem, and this is where I kind of jumped in and I said, the problem I have with the approaches that you are trying to, trying to use here is that what you're trying to do is that you're trying to create a situation where circumstantial semantics is dictating how a feature works. And he goes, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is that it just so happens that the username today is is the same thing as this external ID that the external system is using. So what you're trying to do is that you're trying to create a situation where you're basically forcing in the username into the user like to the in the in the name field on our user model, even though that the the specific information that we're getting from the external API is not Necessary. It's just you know. It just happens to be the username. It could have been anything. It could have been a random ID. It could have been an array of other shit. It could have been anything. But you. So instead of being explicit and saying that this thing here is actually an external identifier, an external key, a foreign key, if you will, and treating it as a foreign key, you're basically trying to fuck up the entire code base by by forcing the system and all the programmers, all the developers, to just know that if this is an API user, then the name should be treated as an ID, instead of just storing it from the, from the get-go as that external ID. So I, I kind of <laughs> took the keyboard from him and said, you see, the problem I have with this is that our entire system now needs to have this if condition whenever we deal with the name. Anything that could affect or change the name or something like that. Like, we, we need to make sure that this, like you're basically creating a two pieces of information here. You need to check if this is true first and foremost, if this or if it's not an API user, and then it's okay to update the name. So you, you create this correlation between the two. There's no way for me as if I come in here in six, from six, in six months, right? And I'm working in this really, really large system. How will I know that these two things are connected without searching for usages of this is API user? I might change this name in another feature in, in six months now and break the whole thing without even realizing that I did so. So let's do this instead. Let's remove this idea of that the username or that this name that we're getting from the external party is just the name. Because this name here, as I said, just happens to be the same thing they're going to use as an external ID. Let's do this instead. external ID and let's make that an optional what I just did now is that I created a explicit key something that is now explicitly stating that this is an identifier there is an external party I could have called it anything it doesn't have to be external ID it could be foreign key or whatever it could have been integration ID or something like that this thing here now acts as that boolean value as we had earlier so we could uh, we're basically now allowing the user in our system to change their username whenever they want and the only thing we have to do is this. Let's see here, request uh, update user, get user. That's all we have to do. So we are now duplicating this information on our model, so we're storing the same information in two fields on our user model, but they are decoupled. 
because one thing just happens to be the one thing is the username and the other thing just happens to act as the or it acts as an external identifier and just happens to be the same value but if we come if there comes another let's say for the sake of argument that they change their mind tomorrow and they say that no we're going to have a real id now we're going to have our own thing we're going to create some other thing or maybe there's another integrator who says that no we're going to have the birth day of the person be the external identifier then I'm free to change this external ID whenever I want but if we did it your way if we, we, if we created this coupling between two completely different pieces of information that actually are they, they just they are as I call it they are just in it's a coincidence that they have a connection it's not explicit it just happens to be that way but that will create a situation where if we were to have, let's say, as I said, this change into having birthdays as an external ID, well, then we needed to go and create another if statement somewhere that checks for if it is the name or the birthday or something like that. So this is the thing that we were talking about, and this is the thing that I was stating here. It is so important that you are being deliberate in your code, because really think about this this quick decision that he was about to make could have fucked up the whole code base for us because as i said in other if we had gone with a boolean flag or like an environmental variable that just remembers that oh our user model if this is true then you should always make sure that the name never changes the whole system now needs to remember that this is the this is the situation and that is a it's just a bug or a regression waiting to happen. So the way that I argue that you should think about semantics is in this fashion. You should really ask yourself, is this piece of information that I'm actually storing here? Because I mean, he didn't want to store double information, but it that costs us, it costs us nothing. So so because the thing that he's actually operating on was not a name, it was an external identifier that just happens to be the same thing. So what I want you to take away from this is that when you're dealing with semantics such as okay, this is a piece of information such as a name and it just ha and then we are you going to use that in some other fa like in different contexts. One context is that oh, we're going to show the name to a user but we're also going to use that as a way of querying the user as in this instance don't couple these things because in one scenario it's just a value that we're going to show to a user this value here that's all we're going to use it for it's just a string but here it's actually an id and an id is a very different thing from a name and even if they he's happened to be the same thing it could have been an email it could have been a phone number doesn't matter it is not the same thing in one scenario, it's an identifier, and in one scenario, it is just display information that we show to a user. So really think about the differences between semantic, like something that is correct, semant semantically correct, and something that just happens to be, or is a coincidental semantical thing. I hope that makes sense. Have a great day.